Hello everyone, my name is Dorian and welcome to another track guide and a patch recap with the LMP2. Now, we are at Nürburgring GP doing ESS and I've had some time to uh, kind of test the car after the update and see what's different and I wanted, I wanted to let you guys know what I feel. Now, I've, tr I've tried it both on Nürburgring GP and Suzuka, so two of, my, one of, two of my favorite combos really with this car. Really fast tracks and a lot of technical corners and curbs. You can really find out what the car is made of. Now, you got the dry stats. It's got less, about 40 or 50 horsepower less. You got way less camber and new suspension options. Um, how does that really affect everything? Well, obviously it's easier to put the power down now. The car is much better on the power in low uh, in low speed corners. When I say much better, it's not like night and day, it still has the same characteristics, but you can take a little bit more liberty with it. It's a little easier to set it up now, I'm, I'm guessing, with the diff and everything. So it's actually quite nice. What you lose in power, you gain in stability, essentially. And I know they said it should be around a second or a second and a half slower than what it was. I, I don't really feel it. Maybe half a second, potentially half a second slower. I think even less than that because the car is just easier to drive now it's much 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 better on the curbs now the new tire mold they added the new uh feature they added to the tire mold that reduced the bounce with the, this new patch that kind of changed the suspension geometry a little bit really helped uh the car manage curbs and dips and everything in that nature so because of that you can be a little more aggressive and as the car is potentially slower, it can now use more parts of the track that it couldn't really use or fully utilize before. So that's why I think the speed difference isn't too high, especially on very technical tracks where you have to use the curbs a lot. I think it's really well made and it's actually more fun to drive. I'm really enjoying it. I don't really feel the camber change as much. I mean, maybe potentially I'm creating less G's going through the corners, maybe have a little less turning, but I don't really feel it. The car is a little softer, a little easier to manage, and I really recommend for anyone who bought it and kind of uh, was kind of hesitant, maybe a little too difficult for him to drive it, now's the time. The car is just, I think it's perfect. I think it's the best it's ever been, and I, honest, I honestly don't want them to change it from this point on. I think it's, they, they hit the nail on the head there. Now, I'm just going to show you guys the track guide, I'm going to show you guys the lap, and then we're going to go over it corner by corner. See you on the track. Coming up to turn number one, let's look for a breaking point. It's gonna be, so we have two breaking points really here. You got this little triangle that merges here. This is its tip, this is its beginning. So with a heavy car, I would break right around here. With a lighter car, I would break right here. That's pretty much the difference between a heavy car and a lighter car. I got about half a tank here, so this is where I braked. Breaking in a straight line, peaking at 90% and staying on a lot of brakes for a long time. 
very important to keep the car straight here you don't want to over rotate the, uh, overheat the, the rear tires they do get light here and the slightest input with the wheel you'll spin the car even the, even if you move the brake bias forward you'll just lock up the fronts so it's very easy to lock up the, the wheels here either front or back that's why you really have to focus on keeping the car in a straight line for as long as possible and only start asking for steering as you really reduce the speed put it in first gear so 150 now put in it in, into first or second is it yeah i think second and now i'm putting it into first so as i put it in first 50 percent brakes i'm gonna start reducing the brakes more and turn in the car ask for more and more input from the steering wheel and as i approach the the, the apex so to speak which is at the halfway point i'm gonna really release it and trail brake into it i'm not trying to uh get, get close to this little bollard here this little pillar because the car doesn't like how steep this dip is so if you stay sort of in the middle here the 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 dip is isn't as harsh and the car is much more stable on the exit so as soon as the car dips down i'm trail breaking all the way into it as soon as the car dips down back on the power i'm running very low rpm here so there isn't much power isn't much torque in this car at this rpm so i can afford to just slam it 70 percent staying on it for a while opening up the wheel not trying to use all of the track here because i want to line up the car to the right immediately and the last 30 percent or so i'm squeezing back out as i straighten out the wheel up to second gear and i'm gonna line the car up to the right and start asking for more and more steering to the left so i'm gonna lift and this corner is all about steering with the throttle this next this next section really next three corners is all about throttle control so i'm gonna lift to around i don't know 10 percent and as i can see i got a little bit too much understeer i'm gonna lift totally and trail brake into it trying to look for the curb on the end side don't look for the curb too early though that's that's gonna cause some problems on the exit you might understeer oversteer on the way out getting off track so you want to look for it right through the middle point so right around here you can see this moment where i stabbed the throttle a little bit I want to see how much grip I had. I want to inspect the car and see, am I going to understeer if I, if I give it a little bit of throttle here? It said yes, so I lifted. Staying in second here for the whole way through. And as I kind of solidify my uh, position on the curb, back to the power, 40, 50%, very gentle, very lazy here, 70%. And as I open up the wheel, I'm, I'm putting it back to 100%. You can see I got plenty of track here to be pretty aggressive and open up the wheel because I didn't go into the curb too early. Now, looking for a breaking point, there's a sequence. There's no visual marker here, so it's quite tricky to find it. I've, I've managed to build a sequence that helps me uh, break correctly every time, which is finish second gear, upshift to third, and as soon as you upshift to third, slam the brakes. So, technically, it's not correct. You don't want to upshift and then break. That's not something I would usually recommend. But because there's no visual markers here, that's the best way I think you can do it. Um, that is, depending on your speed from the previous corner, it can vary. You might want to just hit the limiter and break. But, you know, to each his own. I find that if you hit, the, hit third gear, just upshift, and then start braking, it really helps you break early. Which is what you want to do because you cannot really use more than 50% here. The car will either lock up the fronts or the rears. So 50%. Downshifting into second. And downshifting into first right before this uh, little shadow, whatever it is. Change of color. And I'm going to ask it for more and more. I'm not going to try to turn in too early into the apex. Into this curb really. Because the apex... I'm trail breaking into it now the apex is this point where this gutter this drain it meets the curb that's where i want to put my left front every time so right around here you're not going to get an off track if you do any more than that you might but that's pretty much as much as you want to cut it initially and i'm going to stay on it i'm going to ask for more and more steering as i get on it because i want to stay on it for a very long time 50 percent throttle as i hit the apex just to stabilize the car Give me plenty of rotation. I'm running very low RPM. The car doesn't push forward much. 
and as I open up the wheel, you can see where the where the left side of the car is, right as this uh, curb kind of blends into the white line. Open up the wheel back to 100% for a very short period of time. Starting to turn to the right, look at how far to the left the car is. That's where you want to be every time. And as I start to turn in, still in first gear, mind you, 50%, letting the car look for the apex, putting about two-thirds of the car on the curb here initially, and immediately open up the wheel to avoid the oversteer. And going back, squeezing back to 100%, maybe a little too violent here, had a little bit of uh, oversteer moment here. Upshift into second at this point and the car is going to rotate nicely or actually a little too much for me um this is pretty much as much as you want to cut this curb you can't really do any more than that you will get an off track a little bit of oversteer correcting it clipping this part again can't clip it much more than that without getting an off track and we're through up to fourth gear and we're going to stay in fourth gear for this corner our breaking point is the final cone this white line and we're gonna break right at it, peak very high, around 65%, and immediate release. Letting the car turn in, and I'm looking for the curb on the inside as soon as possible, because that's where all the grip is. That will allow me to carry the most, the highest amount of speed. Trail breaking into it, and as the car kind of drifts away, I'm staying in fourth gear. As the car kind of drifts away, I'm squeezing the throttle. I'm not slamming it, I'm going to keep the car in check, squeezing it all the way to 100%. And as soon as I'm in the middle of the track, I'm going to lift and start braking. From 4th into 2nd, into 3rd, into 2nd. Into Just now into 2nd. And looking for, uh, for, again, looking for the inside here, that's where all the rubber is. Trail braking the whole way through, you really want to keep the weight on the front until you go back to the power, which is quite early because I've managed to find the inside quite early. So I can go back to the power from this point on, and I'm pretty aggressive with it. 70% for a very, very short period of time. Just trying to figure out if the car is going to understeer or not. It didn't, so I was, went straight back to 100%. Using the curb on the way out. Now, there's two ways you can use all of this curb, put four wheels on the screen stuff. Um, the problem with that is the car kind of bounces and you lose a little bit of speed. So I'm trying to kind of halfway through it. Just put half the car on it. Staying on the left here. And we're going to look for a breaking point. It's going to be right as this line breaks. So I would say maybe 10 meters before it. Right around here. As you can see, this line kind of breaks and becomes straight. That's that right here is where where I break with the F3. Right here is where I break with a much heavier car and a faster car in a straight line. So that would make sense. Now I would break right around here if I was carrying a heavier car and colder tires. Keep that in mind. Breaking right around here, slamming it, absolutely slamming it, and I'm gonna start releasing it as I blend out of this curb. Obviously, use this curb on the entry. You want to get a wide approach. Downshifting all the way into first. I'm now in second gear, and I'm gonna put it in first very late. So the more turning I'm asking for the car, the less braking I'm using. And I'm only uh, I'm treating this corner as a very very late apex. You can see I'm not even close to the first apex here. I don't care about it at all. I'm trying to stay in the middle of the track. So I can carry a lot of speed into the corner once once I make that decision. If I try to use it as a double apex, I have to slow down way earlier. And not carry as much speed. And potentially uh, kind of spoil my exit as well. So just put it into first now. And as I put it in first, less braking, more steering. A lot of steering at this point. And as I can see clearly that I'm about to hit this, this apex. That's it. It's power time. So 50, 60% at first. Opening up the wheel. Squeezing a little bit more out of it. And as I really approach this final, this late apex. This is the apex. Slamming it back to 100%. Letting the car go to the outside. using Putting about half the car on the curb. Up to second gear now. And we're through. Now, this is an easy corner, but it, you can really save a lot of tire if you really try to smooth it out. 
the way I do it is I prepare the right side of the tires before I start to turn in. So you can see this little steering input. This is just to tell the front tires, look, I'm going to ask for a lot right now. Be ready. So I'm, I'm loading, and loading them up a little bit before I'm going to start to really turn in. And now I'm going to start to turn in very smooth, very slow. There's tons of downforce. You don't have to be abrupt. You don't have to be scared that the car will understeer. It will not. And we're through. Taking to the outside. Don't need to use all of the track. Just open up the wheel soon enough so we won't scrub any of the tires. Staying in fifth gear here. Don't upshift into, into sixth. And we're going to break right before the 100. Well, the 110. 115 maybe. Maybe 120 even. Is when I'm going to start braking, so right around here. But with a heavier car, I would probably brake here. So you want to keep that in mind. Braking to 90%, put in about half the car beyond this white line. A little bit more than that, it's an off track, so you want to find that sweet spot on the entry. Staying on it for a while, I'm braking to 90, from 90%. And as soon as I start releasing the, the brakes, I'm going to be gradual, but I'm going to release it almost completely into trail braking all the way in third gear you want to keep it in third for this corner because you want to stabilize the car throughout you're going to hit this curb in a uh, with a lot of speed so you want to keep the car nice and stable you want to go back to the power early and third allows you to do that trail braking all the way into this curb don't cut it too early you can see it's very tempting to start cutting it here and what that will do is just ruin your exit you'll just understeer you want to cut it from the halfway point if this is your apex this point right here you want to have your left side of the car or at least left front right here on the screen stuff in the beginning of the screen stuff right around here i'm right on the apex so i know i can release the brakes and go back to the power as the car kind of lands 70 percent, and i'm gonna stay on it for a while i'm trying to avoid the understeer I'm trying to already correct the car to the left here as soon as possible, so I'm not slamming it. I'm just maintaining my speed. Only now, I'm back to 100%. Taking the car all the way to the left, and even before I straighten out the car, I'm going to lift and start trail braking into the corner. About 20% at first, just to slow the car down a tiny bit. We're already going 170. A tiny bit of a slowdown. And into trail braking, staying in third for a little while before I put it in second. Now, what's going to happen if you stay in third throughout this corner? You're going to lose time on the exit. If you stay, in, if you put it in second too early, you're going to lose time on the entry. So we want to be quite late with your second gear, right before you you're trying to accelerate, as you ask for the for the most amount of steering from the car. So I'm going to put it in second just now. And as you can see, as I put it in second, I'm going to turn in more and more. Look for the apex, and already back on the power. And because of that, I'm not carrying too much speed. I get plenty of rotation from the rear end. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be pretty aggressive, 50%, and then squeezing it all the way back to 100 using all of the curb available to me on the way out. The car doesn't get beached here, so you can really abuse it. Just don't try not to hit the rough stuff here, the gravel. And we're through. Nothing nothing special here, just Carrying a nice smooth line on the inside, letting the car go to the middle of the track and preparing for the next braking point. Now, I'm going to put the right side of the car onto the right of this white line using all the track that's available to me. It's very important to really utilize the track here. It gives you a lot of time on the entry for the first uh, apex of this chicane. So I'm going to start braking, let's say, at the 5, uh, at the 50, 60, well, 60. Start braking here, peaking very high, but releasing very quickly as well. From 6th into 4th. Trail braking into the corner. Look at how early I'm releasing the brakes here. I'm not. If you stay on the brakes for too long, you're not going to have any steering. So what I'm doing right now, I'm, as I'm... <clears throat> sorry, I'm using... I, ha I have two stages for the steering here. I'm asking for very little at first. The car is turning in nicely. And... As I have almost no braking the, on the on my inputs, I'm gonna really turn in. So right as I approach this apex, as the, as the car kind of crosses the white line from the left side, I'm gonna really start to turn in to avoid the understeer on the way out to prepare myself better for the next corner. And as I cross the the first 
pillar, the little apex there. I'm going to go back to the power. Around 40%, 50% to make sure I'm not understeering. And as I can see, I'm safe. Back to 100%. No hesitation. And clipping this curb on the way out as well. Again, this is pretty much as much as you can cut these without getting off track. So I got the left side of the car on the white line here. All the way to the outside. Now looking for a breaking point. I don't like, by the way, I don't like using this as an exit curb. Uh, you can pull a 50-50 here and just game over. It will ruin your race. So if you get used to not touching it, maybe losing half a tenth. But it might, it might save your race. No breaking point here. I'm going to start breaking right around here, which might be a little too late. But uh, maybe I could have used a little more braking and still break here. But technically, heavy car, cold tires, I would break, I would say, right around here. Warm tires, half a tank, I would break right here. Speaking at around 70%, the car bounces here. There's a few dips that makes the car bounce on the, on the uh, entry. Under braking, so you want to avoid uh, really slamming the brakes very hard here. You might lock up the fronts. Putting down into 50%, all the way down into second gear. And trail braking into the apex. My turning point, I don't know if I got much of a visual marker for this as well. It's going to be right around here. Again, being very gradual, uh, two parts of, uh, of, of steering here. So I'm going to start very very slowly and then ask it for more and more the less brakes i have kind of missed the apex here though um i went full neutral here no inputs at all and i think that was the problem i should have stayed on about five percent trail brake all the way into the corner that would have caused me to go back you can see i'm i'm going back to the trail braking now but if i stayed on it and not let go i would have put my left or my right front right around here which is exactly where you want to be but already back on the power now. A little aggressive. 80%, 90%, 100%. And I'm going to get a little bit of oversteer. I had to lift just a tiny bit. Around 90%. Didn't really cost me any time. Just trying to find the stability. Using all of the track that's available to me. This is as much as you can cut it without getting an off track. Less than an inch to, to the left here. And that would have been an off track. That's it. That will bring us to the end, and that is a 140.810. Hope you guys enjoyed this track guide. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and hop over to my Discord as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.